Hey guys, what's up? It's Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews. Oh, well, it's that time. I've reached 1,500 subscribers. And it's time for me to do what I said I was going to do when I hit 1,500. Which is talk about... Um, fuck, i got to get off the shelf. Uh, I thought I was ready, but I'm not. Talk about the... Uh, Vinegar Syndrome Storefront Theater Collection Volume 1 All Night at the Pono. Um, okay, so for my 1000 subscriber special, I covered this set from Vinegar Syndrome, which is the Bizarre Art Theater, um, All Night at the Bizarre Art Theater, which is the second volume to this set. Um, these are both collections of 70s porn. I didn't know it was porn when I bought this one, because I bought this one first, so I thought they were like weird art films, because um, it's called the Bizarre Art Theater, um, and it's basically horror and occult-themed 70s low-budget porn, which um, I covered and it was painful. This one... This one was much worse. This one was actually hell to get through. It got to the point to where I gave up towards the end of, um, of some of, 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 of the last one. I, I pretty much just gave up and put it on mute. Um, but either way, I'm going to talk about the movies on this set. So, um, yeah, there, there are a bunch of pornos. There's, like, one on here that's horror-themed, so, you know. But, um, they're all low-budget 70s porn. And I'm going to talk about them because I hate my life. So let me just pour myself a nice beverage here and can get this underway. Okay, so starting off the set, which I went through these discs in order... We have Homer the Latecomer, which is an attempt at a porno comedy film having to do with a guy who is basically an editor at a porn studio. Um, the movie, this one starts with what looks like an attempt at a Roman palace with the titular Homer eating a whole rotisserie chicken that has just lemon slices placed on it while watching some chick strip and then he removes his toga and in classic Roman fashion, that's all he's wearing. <laughs> he then fucks this chick who is stripping, and it goes on for like 20 minutes. Um, after that fucking nightmare, we then learn that this isn't a period piece, and that it was a dream sequence. Um, so, yeah, he works for a porn studio. You get two more people fucking, Homer falls asleep while editing a porno, I think, and we got Homer walking the streets again. It seems to be a hardcore comedy about a guy with narcolepsy, basically. Um, he then goes swimming with some new talent that they hired at the studio. And they end up fucking. And it ends. And that's the first one. And this was pretty much complete foreshadowing as to what was on the rest of the set. Next is Erotic Point of View. Presented by... Come film. I'm not joking. That is what is on screen. Basically, this is a porno about an erotic, erotic novelist and his sexual escapades, but what makes this film interesting, or at least, I guess, unique for the time, is that, it's, oh, that, it, is, ugh, is that it is almost entirely from a first-person perspective. So it's the hardcore Henry of pornography. Um, so we get this writer, he's sitting by the pool, and his... Uh, editor is talking to him about some of her sexual experiences as she's just, like, rubbing his legs, and then she eventually fucking rubs his cock. She goes skinny dipping, and then, you know, he gets some fucking head, and then suddenly he's in her liquor store, there's some lesbianism. Uh, during this scene, I noticed that one of the actresses, um, and I, and I use that term very loosely, uh, has some really fucked up teeth. Um, I got distracted and zoned out and I didn't know what really happened next and then there's a group sex scene they have and then they've abandoned the first person aspect by this point of the film 
Also, there's a, a rape scene, and a scene where they have an orgy while watching a porno, and the porno is produced by horny black men, and edited and sh I think it's shot by Faggy Joe, and stars Peter, directed by Peter Small, and stars Dick Cocker. They thought they were funny. They really did. So, yeah, that's that's the first one. Casual racism and homophobia in there, too. Just to make it e even fucking worse. Next is Porno Mondo, which I was actually interested in see watching this one. Because it's basically a skin flick mixed with some Mondo film documentary elements. Um, and honestly, out of everything on this set, what else do I have to look forward to? Uh, so this is from a production company called Alien Films. This film is, it basically starts with some pictures of ancient Greek and Egyptian art depicting sex. As the narrator explains the importance of sex work and pornography in these cultures to the viewer. Um, saying that it is art because it is untouched by political and social themes. But art is something that is inherently social and political. Like... Obviously, so if porn is art, then porn is political and social. And if it isn't political and social, it's not art. Um, we get some cool shots of L.A. porn theaters. Um, and I'm not going to lie, these shots are very aesthetic. They look very nice. Um, the cinematography was done by <laughs> famed cinematographer George Genitalia Jr., so, we got the narrator talking about how people in pornos are not amoral people, but rather people who are not ashamed of their sexuality. Um, which can be very true, but in the porn industry, but the U.S. porn industry is really, really fucked up. And next we have an interview with the biggest porn producer in the industry, and honestly, it's... Um, it's more interesting, these, these interview segments and everything are a bit more interesting than the skin flick segments... But even then, it really isn't that entertaining, and it's very inaccurate. And it's just an excuse to show off sex while claiming to be more interesting than the film actually is. To be honest, this one becomes pretty dull after the first quarter. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got uh, Sex Before Marriage, which according to the packaging, um, is... A classic sexploitation plotline turned hardcore, showing how sex films cre used creative filmmaking, even in their infancy. So, yeah, it's about a guy who's late to his own wedding and is detoured by sex. In the, the opening scene, his car breaks down, and he catches a ride with some woman walking around in her underwear, and then they fuck on a blanket in, the, in an open field... And it's just the usual fucking shit for this. Um, he gets held up at some house for like the next 30 to 40 minutes. Um, with our star and his new friend basically just like fucking for a while. Uh, they show the main character's wife uh, at their wedding. Um, in the wedding dress. But she's out front of what looks like a bank. Um, <laughs> which gave me a bit of a chuckle. I'm not going to laugh. I'm not going to lie. But... Then he um, gets head while drinking beer in the bed of a pickup truck, and it ends with the hero never making it to the wedding. Okay. Jesus, this is fucking bad. Next, we got the Swinging Playboys. This is a low-budget porno featuring John Holmes in the cast, who was a pretty well-known porn star from the 70s. The only reason I really know about him is because he had, he legendarily had a 13-inch penis, and because his, his life inspired the Paul Thomas Anderson film Boogie Nights, and last but most certainly not least, he was connected to the Wonderland murders that were committed in the 1980s. So, the movie starts with this guy in a bathtub, and he gets a phone call from some babe, and... Then he fucks some other chick. Also, the print of this film is noticeably really, really fucked up. Um, to the point that, like, a fourth of the screen at all times has red streaks going down it. And I don't know what the fuck is going on. To be honest, 
the bad quality and this being probably the only print of the film, um, <laughs> you know, makes this film, the only print of the film being damaged basically makes this movie more interesting. However, it's still boring, and maybe I'd be willing to look past this damage and actually look at the film itself, but I was so distracted by the fucking damage on it, while also being bored, I was just sitting there with a blank expression on my face for uh, most of it. The, the, the damaged film print is still the most interesting thing about this one. And also, the damage gets worse throughout the entire thing, and it's probably the one that looks the worst on the entire set. Now, on to Succula, one I actually wanted to watch. Succula. So this is about a news reporter covering Dracula's rampage through Hollywood while also containing some TV and commercial parodies. So it starts with a news reporter drinking beer on set before talking to the camera about Dracula's Rampage. And the film then cuts to some commercials, um, which is really just, you know, an excuse to have, you know, the hardcore scenes put in. But it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a scene with, with some cock sucking that goes on for what feels like 30 minutes. Um, but it's probably like a few minutes before there's a cum shot and I was already pretty fucking bored. More news stuff, the fucking news reporter saying that vampires are real and that they've uh, compiled real footage of these vampires and will show it after these messages. It's like, um, the next one's like a makeup commercial, but it's about a dildo that smells of wild lemons that, that, that doubles as a deodorant. So that's actually kind of funny in its, like, absurdity and sheer unexpectedness of it. Um... Again, back to the vampire stuff, which the first part is like a, a, a silent film with the interludes, the intertitles, with, with the um, dialogue on it being on chalkboards, and the film having this red tint to it. Uh, it's not good, but I will take this over the bad shit that I'd seen so far in this set. Uh, then there's another parody commercial for coffee, I guess. Um, then you have the news reporter in drag interviewing a vampire who is then killed by the vampire. More silent film segments um, uh, of vampire porn and, and vampire and of a vampire picking up a hooker. And I swear, these the, if this vampire isn't fucking Charlie Manx from Nosferatu, I'm going to be very, very upset. Um, the sex, another sex scene goes on for way too fucking long. I just want to die, honestly. This is fucking painful. Um... It just keeps going and going, and at this point, I did not have the energy. It was more bearable than anything else so far in the set, and, like, pretty much almost everything else in the set. But that's not saying much. It's it's not the geek from the first set. Um, the next one is one that was, uh, I was surprisingly, I was, I was actually surprised by, because it's actually kind of decent. Um, the next one is a rape and revenge film called The Big Snatch. It is about a heroin addict who rapes a woman who is a member of a street gang and they seek revenge on him after this happens. So, first things first, um, the rape scene isn't nearly as bad as I expected it was going to be. I know it's a porno, but there's no real struggle at all and consent is given. So, these two fuck in an alleyway and honestly... This film is pretty fucking well shot. Um, it looks like it was shot in an actual alley, which it might have been. There's some red flashing neon lights off screen that are giving the scene this interesting, flashing, gritty kind of color aesthetic. Um, then after the consensual sex, it gets bloody and rapey as he beats and robs the woman, uh, leaving her in the alley naked. Which is actually a pretty fucking disturbing segment, I'm not gonna lie. The rapist then goes back to his apartment and shoots some heroin. And again, this apartment set is nice. It's simple and cheap, but it has this John Waters kind of aesthetic to it. Honestly, the film feels like they cared about the film's style and sets rather than just shooting some random person's home. So he hears about the trouble coming his way, and he stays with a friend who's a hooker. And again, this... This film is legitimately interesting up to the 20-minute mark, and I was genuinely hooked at this point. 
The hardcore bits in the film uh, aren't to my taste, but getting past them, the film is genuinely an interesting and cheap, sleazy little flick. Uh, the sets are minimal. It, the sets and minimal exterior shots um, in the first few minutes really give the film a surreal, kind of sordid atmosphere that makes it feel even more nasty and scuzzy. Uh, but the film goes on, and I kind of stopped writing because I actually wanted to finish it. And, uh, the film, so I wanted to pay attention to it. And the film goes back to its usual shit, which sucks. Uh, and then the ending, which, uh, happens, which is actually decently bloody and kind of surprising, to be honest. Um, and, and out of the entire set, this was probably the most interesting and watchable one. Um, which is, which is kind of interesting, because I expected the, uh, I expected Succula to be the best one. Um, next is the the Erotic Adventures of Hercules. This is one on the set that I was hoping would be a little decent, considering it was supposed to be, um, a fantasy set porno. Um, you know, some of the costumes funny, maybe, you know, some of the costumes be cheap or whatever, and some of the costumes were actually pretty cheap. They reminded me, kind of, of Torture Dungeon, how that film has some really wild costumes and sets. Um, so Hercules is just this guy living on a rocky beach, with a toga that looks like it's made out of a wolf's pelt. Um, and you got this guy who's the king, who is sloppily eating, like, piece, like, like, fucking eating chicken on a cheap set that is just a bunch of fucking rugs nailed to the walls, um, while getting some head, um, <laughs> wait a minute, hanging on the walls, yeah, he's getting some head, and he's legit eating a whole rotisserie chicken with his bare hands, out of bowls painted gold while getting head. What a fucking legend. Anyway, any anything in the ways of, of plot and story disappear pretty much entirely from this one. And it just kind of makes me want to die. It, it got it, it just got really uninteresting. Uh, next is Shot on Location, which we have one that is a porno comedy, apparently satirizing the film industry. Um, the opening credits are actually pretty interesting, unlike the text on a blank screen that most of these movies have. You have the titles um, and credits of the film written on film canisters and film slates that are being held by, you know, some naked woman, um, often, you know, covering her breasts. And that's a pretty cool kind of visual aesthetic and style to go with for your opening credits. Things go downhill rather quickly, though, because we have a woman fucking a pool boy and her film producer husband fucking some woman in his office, and this goes on for a bit. Does it even matter? Did it even... I mean, this is clearly me reading my notes I took during the film. Does it even matter if I finish this shit? I zoned out for, like, 20 minutes, and I just continued to zone out after realizing I didn't miss anything important. Um, as these go on... The, the descriptions get shorter and shorter because I just, I just started to give up. Um, next is The Touch, which according to the packaging is a hardcore crime caper. And I could not be brought to the point of caring. I actually fell asleep watching this one. And by the time I woke up, the next title had already started and I didn't bother to restart this one. Uh, the Carnal Go-Around. This one, according to the case, is a cheap, sleazy flick that really encapsulates the kind of hardcore films that were made in the golden age of pornography. I don't know what the plot was, but according to IMDb, it's about a woman who works as a prostitute teaching her friend how to be a prostitute, and it's supposed to be like a hardcore comedy similar to Homer the Latecomer. Um, but similar to that film... You know, I, I, it was really unfunny and boring, and I finished it by mainly just muting it and working on this video in the meantime. Uh, and finally, on to the last film. This one is surprisingly shorter, but um, I'll get to that in a minute. All American Hustler. This one uh, is apparently a hardcore film attempting to be a tragic drama. But this is not...
fucking Flesh Pot on 42nd Street, which is actually a great hardcore drama. Um, so you know what I did with this one? I put it on mute and turned on my audiobook of Brave New World and just sat and enjoyed some actual, something of substance for, for the, the, that, 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 I think, hour that the film took up. And I don't regret not actually paying attention to it. So, this set was so bad that I actually gave up. I, I, I quite literally stopped taking notes for some of them. I completely just dropped everything and I didn't want to finish it. Um, some of these, like I just said, I, I muted or just felt asleep during. At least with the Bizarre Art Theater set, it gave me something to work with and something to kind of power through, even if it wasn't that interesting. There were still interesting elements to it. There were still things that were interesting about them. They were, most of them were horror-themed when it came to their plots. They had cheap sets and costumes to make them at least somewhat tolerable and entertaining and fun in kind of a cheesy way. They had something about them. Um, even the worst ones had, had at least something going on. You know, that would at least keep me um, entertained or at least, you know... I, I, I didn't want to... You know, I wanted to stop watching those films, most definitely, in, the, in that first set. But I never really went through with it, for the most part. I usually just powered through it. With this one, I pretty much gave up, because these are actually fucking atrocious. I would rather watch the Bizarre Art Theater set again, um, and I don't plan to. I, in conclusion, that's, that's, that's the 1500 subscriber special, um, I'm just gonna... Uh, give me a second here. We got another one. Anyway, guys. That was the 1500 subscriber special. And, uh... I actually want to fucking die after doing that set. I pray to God that Vinegar Syndrome does not release any more of these sets. And... I... Pray to God that this video is, is interesting and entertaining. I want to thank everybody who has subscribed to me and who has stayed subscribed over the years. Um, when I first started this channel many, many years ago, I didn't really expect much. Uh, hell, when I reached 200 subscribers in like 2015, after I got out of high school, I was ecstatic. I was like, oh my God, 200 people care about what I have to say about bad movies. And here I am almost, and here I am about five years later, um, and I have 1,500 people who think what I have to say is worthwhile. And I'm super thankful for every last one of you. So, anyway guys, this is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, signing off. Peace.